Welcome back! Today we're spicing up our tower defense game. In this tutorial, we'll create a projectile class and introduce it to our Gatling tower for some seriously cool firepower. Game's looking good, but it's about to get a lot cooler. We're diving into an abstract projectile class and a Gatling tower integration. Stay with me as we talk through the process. If you're enjoying our game dev content, remember to subscribe. Ready to amp up the tower defense experience? Let's roll with our game dev tutorial. Okay, so let's go into our scripts folder, right click, create a new folder, let's name it projectile, let's open it up, and here let's create a new script, let's call it abstract projectile, and let's also create the Gatling projectile. So let's wait for compile, Gatling projectile, awesome. Let's open the abstract projectile class. Okay, and here we are not gonna use the start and update method, so let's delete them. Let's make this class abstract, so abstract keyword here. And now we're going to use a int, which is basically our damage. So we think that all our projectiles are going to deal some damage. So we can say protected and damage. We also need a method to set this damage. So public void set damage and we pass in damage. And inside this method, we want to do this dot damage equals damage. So we can set our member variable uh, value to whatever damage is. And we also need a method and we're going to use on trigger enter so void on trigger enter we pass in a collider let's name it other and if other dot game object uh, that's not good game object dot compare tag and here we need to pass the enemy tag so we say enemy and from the enemy tag, from the enemy game object, actually, we're going to get the enemy controller. So enemy controller equals, uh, sorry, enemy equals other dot game object dot get component. And we're going to get the enemy controller. Awesome. And here, let's look for the enemy controller first. So we have it here. We have this hit method and we're going to call it here by saying enemy dot hit and we pass in the damage and if not other dot game object dot compare tag turret we should destroy the game object. Awesome. And now let's look into our Gatling projectile. So this one will inherit from our abstract projectile class. We're going to remove the start and update because we're not going to use it. And here we can give it some effect. So let's say private trail renderer, trail renderer. And let's make use of the awake method. So void awake. Let's get the component. So trail render equals get component. Trail renderer. Uh, T. And if trail renderer equals equals now, we want to return. So if we don't have a trail render, we return. Otherwise, let's do some configurations. So configurations. Let's say trail renderer dot time equals 0 0.5. So these are some values that I've experimented with and I think they work fine, but you can try different values. So this is the time it takes for the trail to fade out. We also have a trail renderer dot start with 
and this is 0.1f. So the width of the trail at the spawn point. And we also have a trail renderer dot and width. Uh, yeah. And this one, let's put it to zero. And this is the width of the trail at the end point. That's all. Let's open up the Unity. Let's see if it compiles. Yep, everything is fine. And now let's create our projectile. So first right click, create a 3D object. Let's do a sphere. Let's bring it here so we can see it. Okay. Let's rename that to Gatling projectile. Okay. And now we're going to add a few components to this projectile. So let's first do a rigid body. The rigid body, it's okay. It uses gravity and it's not kinematic, so that's fine. We also need a trail renderer because we're trying to get that from the script. And in the trail renderer, we can add a material. Now, let's go to the prefabs folder. Actually, let's go under the materials folder and let's create a new material and name it red. I want it to look red, so let's do a red material. Let's go back to the projectile. And here where it says materials, let's drag and drop that. Okay. And let's also add the script we just made. So Gatling projectile. Okay. And we also need to do something else. So this is a sphere collider and it should, we should tick the East trigger here. Flag as we make use of the on trigger enter method. And let's also make this sphere a little smaller. So let's say uh, 0.1 maybe. Let's see how that looks. Um, yeah, I think that should be fine. So in the prefabs folder, let's create a new folder and let's name it projectile and drag and drop the Gatlin projectile in here. Let's remove that. And now we also need to make the actual tower shoot. So where are we going to do that? We're into the tower script. So let's go back in here and here we have a fire method that we are debugging something here. You were locking something. So let's remove that. And in here we want a projectile. So we want to instantiate the prefab we just made. So game object projectile equals instantiate. And we need a projectile prefab. We also need a fire point, that position. And we also need to pass in a transform. It doesn't really matter. So let's just do a quaternion dot identity. And now let's declare these variable variables here on the top. So let's say a public game object. Uh, let's name it projectile prefab. Like we did below and also let's do a public transform and let's name it fire point. Now let's go back into unity and assign those values. So let's see project uh, prefabs projectile and we have this. Uh, let's bring it into the scene. And in here uh, actually we don't need that. Sorry. We need to go to our Gatling tower. So here in the Gatling tower, yes, we have the projectile prefab. So drag and drop the projectile and we also need a fire point. So let me see if we have something already here. Otherwise we can create an empty, um, yeah, we 
do have this, but let's just create an empty child game object. So let's name it Firepoint. And I want the Firepoint to be a bit in the front. Yep, here, I think it's fine. And let's go back to the Gatling game object. Drag and drop the Firepoint. Oh, let's just drag and drop again this one. So we, we apply it to the prefab. And now we have these two. Let's go back into our script. Okay, so we have the projectile pre prefab, the Firepoint position, and we're passing in the identity. And now we need a projectile that get component and we want to get the Gatling projectile and let's set this damage so set damage and for now let's pass in a value here we're going to make use of scriptable objects later on and we can do that based on the tower type we have so let's just pass in like a, a number here like let's say it's 10 Okay, so we have a damage of 10. And now we want to do a projectile that get component. And we want to get the rigid body so we can give it a velocity. Rigid body dot velocity. And here we want to fire point dot forward vector times the bullet velocity. Again, we do not have those values, but we can set something here. Let's say a velocity of 12. Uh, we can change that if it's too, too high or too little. And we also need to start the coroutine so our tower doesn't shoot constantly at every frame. So we want start coroutine, reload. And now we need to make this method. So let's say private I enumerator reload. And we need the bool value, which we're going to declare it in a moment. So let's say is reloading equals true. And then we want to wait for a few milliseconds. So yield return new wait for seconds and let's say we want to wait for 0 0.1 and then we want to set is reloading back to false now let's declare this value here so private bool is reloading equals false and there is one final thing which we need to do we need to let the towers know when one of the enemy dies so in the enemy controller where we have the death here we want to set to let the towers know we need to find all the towers that are around the enemy which we are currently trying to kill so let's say float range equals let's say 15 and now let's look for the colliders around. So collider hit colliders. And this is a physics dot overlap sphere transform dot position. And let's say range here and also the tower layer, which we haven't declared it yet, but we are going to do it in a moment. So we need to go through all the hit colliders in hit colliders. So hit collider in hit colliders. And in here we want to get the tower. So tower equals hit collider dot get component. And let's take the tower script. Oh, tower and if the tower is not null we want to access a method 
which we haven't declared it, but we will do it in a moment. So let's say for now tower that enemy destroy. And we pass in the game object. And now let's declare the tower layers uh, here on the top. Let's say public layer mask is tower layer. And let's not forget to create this method in the tower script. So back in the tower script, let's say before the fire here, we need a public void enemy destroy that takes in a game object. Okay. And in here, we want to do if enemies in range that contains the enemy. Then we want to remove the enemy. And then update the target. Cool. Let's go back into Unity. Everything seems to be fine. We need now to set uh, the tower layer on our enemy, but let's first create it. So let's do an add layer here. Let's call it tower. And in the, in your enemy, you can set the layer here to tower. Awesome. And let's not forget to also update our tower with that specific layer. Yes, change, and that should be it. So now let's test it out. As you can see, our towers are shooting and our enemies have no chance of passing. We can put the damage a bit lower or you can increase the velocity of the bullets or whatever you want to do. And there you have it, game developers. We've successfully added a whole new dimension to our tower defense game. With the abstract projectile class and our Gatling tower integration, our game is on its way to becoming even more exciting. Remember, it's all about the experimenting and pushing boundaries. Don't hesitate to get creative and try new things in your project. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more game dev insights and tutorials. Thank you for joining me in this journey of game development, keep coding, keep creating and most importantly keep having fun.